this is what you're looking for. You want this beautiful mahogany outside. Hey, I'm Mark Lambert here in the Sweet Swan of Mine Distributing Test Kitchen. We're going to show you guys something a little bit different today. Maybe a cut of meat that you don't see every day in your grocery store. Um, but it is every day at one grocery store. And if you have an Aldi near you, um, this is where you're going to get this cut of meat today. And it's, it's a pork butt. When you buy this at Aldi, it says a half pork butt roast. So half butt roast is what it says. So when you buy this there, uh, this one is three and a half pounds. You know, it runs $1.99 a pound. So your typical pork butts are gonna run somewhere in the neighborhood, you know, in the grocery, probably $1.89 to $1.59 normal. And then you'll see them on sale for 89 cents, 99 cents. But the difference in this, this is the top of the pork shoulder. So if you think about this, this is the very top of one pork shoulder. Here's the spine. You've got another one right over here and the spine's here. So this is the top of the pork shoulder or the collar. And when you see it, um, you know, like in a butcher spec, it'll be a collar, pork collars, or it'll be a CT butt, which is a seller trim butt. But at the end of the day, uh, for your competition guys, it's got your money muscle on top right there. And where they cut it off is right where the blade bone starts. And the blade bone would be running right through here. And when that's gone, you've got the goodie of the pork butt left. So because you can buy this and i didn't see it till the other day i just happened to be cruising by and don't normally look, look at the meat at aldi but you can find a cellar trim pork butt or a pork collar at aldi and the great thing about it is there's no bone there's no waste whenever you buy this uh you know you're gonna you know typically in a pork butt you're gonna have as much as 35 sometimes 40 percent waste but you're gonna have only about 20 to 25 percent waste in this one one because there's no bone uh and you don't have a ton, there's no fat cap. A lot of times you have a fat cap. Sometimes there's even skin. This one has a netting around it that helps hold it all together. But we're gonna take it out of that and we're gonna season it. We're gonna show you what we season it with. We're gonna cook it on the red box today. Cook it hot, cook it fast. Um, and we sh this thing should be done in you know two or three hours probably. Uh, we'll see how it goes. We're gonna probe it and follow it along. Check it out, we're gonna, uh, we're gonna get right at it. All right, so we have got our pork collar in a pan. And we're gonna get this out. I'm trying to keep one hand clean, one hand dirty. So you see, it's got a net on it. We're gonna pull that net off. We don't need that. It's a, let me push it into that to retain its shape. So this is where the blade bone normally would have been right through here. And you can see there's this uh, blade meat or secreto that runs across the top of here. Many times there's another fat cup on top of this. Um, there's a layer of fat underneath the blade meat or secreto. And over here is our money muscle. You can see that, that uh, shape of the money muscle that's running this way, but it has these dividing lines through it. So we're not gonna do a lot of extra trimming to this. I don't think it's necessary. This one is really trimmed up nice right out of the package. I mean. Yeah, you could take a little extra fat here and there off of it, but you know, for all practical purposes, I don't see the need to do it. Um, not for what we're doing here, guys. This is just backyard barbecue. But this is the money muscle. This is the goody part of the pork butt. It's quick, it's easy to cook, and most people don't need a whole pork butt for their family anyway, and this just works out great. So first layer on pretty much everything we cook is boars not out white lightning. I mean, that is the first layer. Many, many, many of these good barbecue rubs that, um, that everyone loves, such as Sweet Rub of mine, have lots and lots and lots of sugar and not a lot of salt. Um, big chunk of meat like this needs a little bit of salt. So there's a little bit of salt, a little bit of sugar, and all the good you need, um, onion and garlic and everything in white lightning. So I like to put, as you know, it's just a nice thin layer of white lightning all over it. Now. I don't want a ton of rub on this um, this collar because we're going to cook it hot and fast and if I did it would burn. We're going to put a light coat, a sweet rub of mine on it, just a light coat. I don't want a ton of sugar to burn because we're going to cook it hot, hot and fast. And I'll show you guys what our temperatures are going to run, but um, you know, at the end of the day, if you're cooler than me, cook it longer. If you're hotter than me, which you probably won't be, you can cook it quicker. You can just wrap it quicker, but we're going to put a light coat. And what we're looking for here, guys, is a really good caramelized bark on the outside before we wrap it. 
that's about all we need to do y'all um, you know we can do more after you wrap but uh, we're gonna get lots and lots of color at our temperature that we've got already um, if you're gonna inject it you know, I'd take the sweet brine of mine, mix it up according to directions. This bottle makes a half gallon. I would only need about a quarter of this bottle, one pint for this amount. Typically, if you're using sweet brine of mine, you're gonna use about an ounce of liquid per pound. So if this one was three and a half pounds, you know, a pint would be more than you really need. Um, when we wrap it, we are going to put a nice coat of sweet sauce of mine, uh, sweet and spicy vinegar. We're gonna add probably a little bit of butter and a little light brown sugar just your typical thing you wrap a pork butt or rib with so at the end of the day this is really all you need we're going to sop up all that good rub in there make sure that we've got uh, a nice even coat and when we put it on the cooker this is going to caramelize awesome uh, we're just going to throw a little apple wood maybe a chunk or two of hickory and we'll see how long it takes to get to wrap and uh, then we'll go from there so this is an experiment i've never uh, bought one of these and just cooked a, a cellar trim butt or a collar and uh, but you guys get to follow along and learn as well and uh, hopefully you can, you've got an aldi close by and you can try this at home as well this is the good part this is the best part of the pork shoulder we're going to go over to red box now and get it cooking okay we're here at the red box we're ready to put this pork butt or pork collar on half pork butt how whatever you want to call it i'm gonna call it a uh you can call it a money muscle but i'm gonna call it a ct butt or seller trim butt that's the proper term um we've got our red box up to temperature now i'm gonna tell you this thing's hot it's probably you know 480 degrees somewhere in there I don't care it could be 400 it could be 350 time and temperature more of one less of the other less of one more of the other at the end of the day all we're looking for is we're cooking the color when we're gonna cook hotter we're gonna wrap it a little quicker um, that's at the end of the time so just think about it hot and fast low and slow depending on what you're cooking if you're cooking hot you're gonna wrap it quicker if you're cooking low you're gonna wrap it later it doesn't really matter Depending on sugar content uh, and the type of meat and its overall cook time, that usually decides the factor of how I'm going to cook it. We've loaded this up with some B&B char logs, as you can see right here. Uh, there's not a lot. I'm going to say it's about, overall, it's about seven B&B char logs. doesn't take much to get this thing really hot. Uh, we're going to get them over here to one side so that we're going to throw on a few pieces of a whiskey barrel chunk. And we're going to throw on a few pieces of apple wood and we're just going to throw those in there right there and then we're going to come over here we've got our flame boss 400 hooked up uh, it's probably set on around 350 uh, but it ramped up to temperature so quick I forgot the damper was open on the bottom so when you run the flame boss or guru or whatever it is uh, always keep your extra dampers closed so it doesn't draw so as you see we've got a dry heat diffuser Excuse me. Dry heat diffuser is here. This is what we like to use when we cook dry. It just allows the smoker to reverse flow like it was designed. Uh, if you don't have this in there, it's just heat coming straight through. But with this in place, it sends heat and smoke into the double wall, up to the top, back to the bottom, and back out the chimney. So it allows it to reverse flow as it was designed to. Um, we've got the rack on the very top right here. Uh, if we were cooking low and slow, we put the water pan in. Or if we were cooking ribs low and slow, um, but that allows to maintain lower, longer temperatures. This is hot and fast cooking. This is traditional pit barbecue flavor. Anytime those coals are dripping through and hitting the diffuser and running down into the coals, lots and lots of flavor going on here. So we're gonna take this out and we're gonna get our CT or collar butt and we're gonna go just right on the top. Hear that little sizzle? It's because she's hot. We've got um, our Flame Boss meat probe we're just going to go right in the center right there and i'm not using that to decide when i'm going to wrap it i'm using that just to tell you guys what temperature it is when i do wrap it because uh, it's all about color right here so i'm thinking it's going to be about an hour may not take that long at this temperature so we just put our wood on and just see it starting to smoke in the back according to the thermometer on the top whew, it's about three o'clock, so I'll look at that in a minute. I ain't tall enough to see it. <laughs> it's running at about three o'clock is where that's thing. I'm gonna say it's somewhere around 450 to 500 degrees. It's gonna continue to come down. It's gonna get awesome color. This is backyard sliced barbecue pork at its best. So I'll show you what it looks like when we get ready to wrap it. Show you how to wrap it, and we're gonna put it back on. We're gonna cook it, let it rest, and that's some awesome sliced. 
pork collar or money muscle. Check it out. Okay, we're 45 minutes into our cook on this cellar trim butt on the red box. We put it in, it was, I'm telling you, this thing was 480 degrees. It's still running 402 degrees. 45 minutes later, I'm gonna tell you, just because, just so you know, the meat's only like 103 degrees internal. Uh, but our color is where it needs to be. And that's what you're doing this to, is the color. So we're gonna pull our meat probe out and hang it there. We're gonna pull this butt, I wanna show you. This is what you're looking for. You want this beautiful mahogany outside. That is what you're looking for. This is what it should look like. Not the temperature. Don't worry about the temperature. It's 103 degrees, we know. We're gonna put the probe back in when we wrap it, and that's when the temperature is much more important. So, we're gonna come over to the table, and we'll show you our process on wrapping it, and then how to set it up to go back to the cooker. Okay, we're here, and you notice we've got this thing sitting in a pan in some uh, food service film. We're gonna wrap this thing two ways. In food service film first, with all the goodie, and then we're gonna put it in foil just to sort of maintain and help make sure that our racks don't burn through or poke holes in our film. So, first thing we do is I like to go in here and lay a couple of pats of butter, uh, just the regular salted butter that I'm gonna lay in next to this. And then I'm gonna take a little bit of brown sugar. You can use light or dark, it doesn't matter. I'm gonna put a little bit of brown sugar over this. Just gonna rub it around. And then you can use whatever barbecue sauce you like. For my flavor, I like uh, the sweet sauce of mine, sweet and spicy vinegar sauce. Now, the reason I like the vinegar sauce, is because you notice I've got all this brown sugar in here, it counteracts and balances the vinegar just a little bit. I'm sorry, the, the sweetness. Uh, the, the vinegar counteracts it um, and balances the sweetness of the sugar out. So, I'm gonna wrap that up. And then we're just gonna take this, fold it over, fold our ends in to try to maintain as much of this liquid as we can. And you gotta wrap it on over quick because you're gonna lose a little. So now I'm gonna fold the ends on, and then when we we'll pull it out again, I'm gonna roll it end over end. Like this. And then I'm gonna turn it again, and go this way. Now the heat on the outside of this is gonna cause this to fuse really quickly. So fold the ends in, get it wrapped up nice and tight. As you can see, I want it wrapped up like that. I'm gonna go end over end one more time. Don't worry about this stuff, it's cheap. You want it wrapped good. And that's about it. Push all your ends in. It's hot, it's gonna fuse all that together really good. Now we're gonna take a little bit of aluminum foil. I'm gonna come back with aluminum foil here. And I'm gonna get this ready to wrap here. Now, here's my meat probe. I'm gonna wrap it in, the, I'm gonna push this meat probe in the end. And I'm gonna try to get right in the center of that right there. And now, we're gonna come around and I'm just gonna fold the ends up. And I'm gonna kinda of wrap around this little meat probe here. Tightly around it. You could poke it, poke it through the center and through the foil if you wanted. I don't do that because I like to see um, kind of where my probe is. Uh, the other thing is, you know, I'm a competition guy and sometimes you can push a piece of foil into the meat and if the judges find that, you get disqualified. So it's just sort of a habit that I do it and wrap around the probe. So at this point, it's gonna go back on the pit. It's still around 400 degrees, no problem. We're gonna plug this back into our Flame Boss 300. I'm sorry, 400 as it's going and we're going to follow this and watch this butt as it gets up you know around that 198 205 degree mark but we'll feel it we'll be able to feel how soft it is right now it's real spongy i mean real uh rubbery and as it gets closer it'll be like a really soft sponge and it'll hold when you push in on it it's going to dent and stay so it's going to go right back on the red box uh, and we're just going to let it continue to ramp its way down. I think we've got it set at 350, so hopefully it won't get down below that. Uh, maybe another hour or so. We'll see how it goes. 
Okay, this is what it looks like when it comes out. So it's still wrapped in plastic wrap. We just pull the foil back. We cooked it 45 minutes unwrapped for our color. It took another two and two hours and 15 minutes roughly to get to uh, this uh, 200, I think it was 202, 201 degrees when I took it off. Uh, but it, it's, it's gotten soft. It's gotten super soft. And I do want to slice it a little bit, so I'm not going to take it much past that. Um, you know, you can t start about 195, checking it and see what your texture is going to be. Um, because I cooked it hot and fast, I'm going to take it a little past where I would normally take it. Normally, a, a, typically a, a, a money muscle, we're going to take it to about 198, 200, sometimes even 205. I'm going to slice this and I'm going to let it stay a little shy. Because I cooked it hot and fast, my finished temp is going to be a little higher than it would if I cooked low and slow. So, I'm going to pull the probe out. And we've got a... a First thing is I got a little bit of juice as you can see in here, a little fat. So I'm gonna dump this right here, get that out of the way first. And then we're gonna come in here and we're gonna cut our plastic, our saran wrap, or where's food service film, put it really. Is. We're just gonna cut it open. And then we're just going to turn it out. Oh, it's soft. There we go. I'm going to take our film, throw it away. And we can just leave it in this foil. It's not going to hurt a thing. You could remove it, but it's not going to matter. So, um, because I like vinegar, I'm doing sweet sauce of mine, sweet and spicy vinegar. You can use a sweeter sauce if you like. I like the more vinegar that still has not plenty of sweet for me. So we're going to give it a nice pour. We're going to stick it back in the cooker that's still about 285 degrees right now. And we're going to let that sauce set up on there. And then we'll come back and we'll pull it out. Let it set a minute and then we'll slice it. There's going to be some awesome barbecue pork. Okay, this is what it looks like or what it should look like when it comes out, y'all. So. Um, when we took it out and unwrapped it, we just put a little bit of sweet and spicy vinegar sauce on it and we put it back in the pit. I just threw three little chunks of apple wood and one little sliver that was left in there. So three and a half little chunks of apple wood right in front of the fire. I'm sorry, right in front of the, um, the right in front of the fan where the flame boss blows in. There were still a few coals left in there. We didn't have to add any coals throughout this cook. Um, you know, 45 minutes uh, to color and then another two and a half hours roughly uh, overall to uh, get to tenderness and then just another just another 15 minutes or so to set the glaze and we apply a little smoke to the outside so we're gonna let it rest just a few minutes here uh, we're gonna let it firm back up a little just so it doesn't fall apart when we slice it and uh, we'll slice it up show you what it looks like it's gonna be good it smells awesome wish you could smell it we have rested and we have cooled enough, I think we can slice it. It may still fall apart a little bit. You know, we don't cook a lot of these, but I tell you what, I'm going to cook them in the future now that I know where to go get them. Um, getting you to seller trim butt, you can get it at Aldi. And we're just gonna take our slicer here and we're gonna go across this and we're gonna cut them quarter inch or so. And an electric knife would probably work a little better when it's hot like this. It won't wind up with a little bit of uh, crumbling, but I'm not worried too much about it. This is eaten. And some of that that's crumbling on the front is that secreto or blade meat. That's the that's the that's really the best part right there, y'all. That's the best bark. So you can take and slice this off. That blade meat will crumble off. But that's the good stuff that's reserved for the chef. Anyway, so there you have it. Sliced cellar trim pork butt. And you can take some of your reserved juices here and just come right back over the top. And you can put that between some good bread or you can just lay it right next to some good slaw and cold slaw potato salad. There you have it. Three and a half hours in the red box. Like I said, we put it on, it's 450, 460 degrees, and uh, we just slowly let it come down. 
B&B char logs was our fuel choice today and I think we only used about seven seven and a half char logs uh, we put it on hot and just let it slowly come down finished off with a little apple wood and man those slices look at that that is some goodness y'all it's super tender sliced real easy and held together the temperature is really good on this y'all so give this a try at home go to Aldi get you a cellar trim or what they call a half port butt god bless you peace out